in this part two, I will take you on a full day adventure to parts of the Tierra del Fuego that only very few people have seen yet. And on top of that, we're going to explore the famous national park itself. In the end of the video, I'll give you some really important tips on how to travel this area of the world that you shouldn't miss, so stay tuned for that. But let's not lose more time and start the journey right away. So what I recognize about Ushuaia is that it makes me feel free. And what supports that is if you just rent a car for a day. For that, you can go exploring and there are many, many places just waiting to be discovered and you can really reach the end of the end of the world. So always stop at various viewpoints because the views you get here are just insane. Like, I'm not exaggerating. So in the first part of our journey, we are going to the Faro Sao Paulo. And that is really special because it's one of the last real lighthouses in the Tierra del Fuego. The road to there is kind of bumpy, but it's a fun adventure. Oh, there's a guanaco! So cool! Wow! The guanaco is one of the largest mammals in South America and closely related to the llama. It has its name from the main language that the native people and even the Inca used to speak, named Quechua. So we just got out of the car and we walked the last two kilometers to the Faro. There's literally nothing else, like this is really the end of the world. <laughs> We just arrived at the Cabo Sao Paulo. Looks kind of broken. It's kind of broken. <laughs> and it's one of the smallest lighthouses. Look at that. It's literally five stones. <laughs> so it's on there. That's how you use it. <laughs> we also just spotted a shipwreck from afar. And maybe we can get closer later, but this looks insane. But why am I here? Well. This part of Patagonia is really special because it's one of the only places where you can see the Andes and the coastline at the same time. It's also eternally peaceful. You don't hear anything other than the waves crashing onto the shore, maybe the wind and your own voice. <laughs> that is basically it. We went back from the Faro to the car and decided to go and see the shipwreck and what I'm seeing is massive. An ancient curse among the seafaring traditions reads at the last judgment, those who dare to defy the cape cannot be freed from their frozen graves. The Desdemona shares their destiny. In a rough and stormy night in the spring of 1985, the ship looked for shelter in the Bay of San Pablo and never left. break literally blew my mind. It was absolutely amazing and um, now we just got back to the car and wanted to continue our journey but then we spot that little kind of restaurant house on the side of the street and they had a sign that they offer drinks. So we decided to get in and now we're sitting in a kitchen of a house and getting served a beer and coffee by, by local people in their own kitchen. That is Amazing! <laughs> wow! And they told us that they used to fish he uh, here. They have their web uh, over the sea. So that when the sea goes down, they go to take the the fish the product and bring it here so they can cook it. It's called flan, and um, it comes with dolce de leche, and it is only made out of milk. <laughs> it's only made out of milk and eggs from their home. Yeah. yeah, so it's 100% homemade. Amazing, tastes super, super sweet. They gave us free bread, they gave us free dessert, and also free coffee, so that was absolutely super cool. They didn't have to do that, they don't have much, and that is why it means even more. We homemade empanadas to bring to our hostel as our dinner, and I'm really excited for them. So we just spent one and a half hours all together, talking, having a good time and now we just did a little photo shoot just for the memories. We just got back in the car, it's already getting dark and we are on our way home now but what's for sure is that we experienced so many things that we didn't expect to experience and that is exactly why it's worth it to get a car for one day in Ushuaia to explore the hidden gems, to explore the things that not everybody goes to and have a peaceful experience just surrounded by nature, by yourself and new people you meet along the way. So today we got up super early to go on a hike and uh, a place where you can do that really really well is the Tierra del Fuego National Park and that's exactly where we're headed. Having our hike in the National Park and the weather is shitty as fuck. It's super muddy <laughs> but it's an adventure for sure. <laughs> There's a lot of mud, a lot of humidity and um, yeah that really contributes to, to the atmosphere here. 
The way we're going is so beautiful with all the dead trees around us that all look burned and broken down. While we are wandering the national park, it's time for some historic backgrounds. Originally inhabited by the Yagan native people for over 10,000 years, the first Europeans who came to explore this most southern tip of the continent named the area Tierra del Fuego, meaning land of fire in Spanish. That is because of the many campfires the explorers observed from their ships. The native people mainly lived from the natural resources of the sea, such as sea lions and shellfish. But this culture shares the same destiny as many other native tribes around the world. It first got suppressed and now just one month ago, on February 16th, 2022, the last truly native person from the Yagan tribe named Cristina Calderon died aged 93. Now back to our hike. So we just found that place with the first autumn colors already popping through and it's insane for photography. We just made a little photo shoot here before we continue. I'm doing a quick break now <laughs> with the crew after the day. <laughs> because from now on it's gonna go uphill and we need some energy. <laughs> so we are now about nine kilometers into this hike and meanwhile the forest is getting darker and the roots are getting smaller and um, yeah the deeper we go into the forest the more we disconnect from the outside world. Crazy how wild and untouched everything is. The best place on how to describe how this forest feels is if you saw the Lord of the Rings or the Hobbit, then Merkwood. <laughs> Am I in a movie or what? <laughs> Don't fall in the river! <laughs> now it's really going uphill. We made quite a few meters in altitude and it just started snowing a little bit. The fog, the light snowfall and the darkness of the forest really create an atmosphere like you're in a fairy tale or in a fantasy movie. It's amazing. Those are the final meters of today's hike. My legs hurt as shit, but we made it. Fuck yeah. Woo! <laughs> Our hike to the national park was amazing. But I was so relieved when we arrived at the trailhead after 23 kilometers of walking. What a day. I wanted to use that end of the video to give you some valuable tips that you need before you come to Ushuaia. For the most part, this place is about outdoor adventuring, so please make sure you bring the right gear and equipment. That can simply save your ass. I made a little list of useful and inevitable things that you'll need, and I'll put it in the description. Secondly, don't book your tours online. Of course, TripAdvisor or similar platforms are an easy way to do that, but if you want to save some money, don't. It costs you so much more. Rather go to the port directly or get a number from a certain tour operator from your hotel or hostel receptionist. That brings me to the next tip. Pay cash. Please pay cash. Why? Well, in Argentina the currency is not really strong. So here's what you should do. Bring a lot of dollars from your home country and go to a shop, hotel or hostel and you get a way better exchange rate than you would usually get. Basically your money suddenly almost has twice the value. That makes everything you pay in cash almost twice as cheap. If you didn't bring dollars from your home country and are already in Argentina, you can also go to Western Union, there you'll get the better exchange rate as well. Fourth tip, act wise for guided expeditions. Depending on the weather and condition, it can be really useful to book a tour in advance, for example, if you want to visit the Vinci Guerra Glacier. Last but not least, don't overbook yourself. The Tierra del Fuego offers so many great things to see that you need two weeks to do everything. So pick only the adventures that you feel drawn to the most and I really hope this video helped you a little bit with making the decision. If you want to see a whole video about tips how to travel Argentina in the future, write it down in the comments. And with that said, that's already it for my little Ushuaia travel series. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, you know what's coming. Click like and subscribe to follow me on my journey around South America. Thanks for watching, love you all. See you in the next one.